In the previous video, we introduced the present value and future value concepts, and we made some calculations to transfer our initial $100 at equals zero at different points in time in the future. Over here, you can see the calculations to transfer it at t equals one and t equals two, that is calculate the future value in a year's time and in two years time respectively. In this video, I would like to manipulate this calculation to arrive to something similar to this and eventually express a neat relationship between the present value and the future value. So let me write the calculation to arrive at the future value at t equals two again. Future value at time two equals 105, which is the amount at the start of the previous year, plus the interest we will receive, which is 5% on those 105. So far, I didn't do anything different relative to what I did in the previous video. Now, this is where things start to get more interesting. To manipulate this expression, I can express this 105 as 100 times 1 plus 0.05. Remember, this is one of the ways we arrived to 105 in the first place when we did the calculation to get the future value at year 1. If what I just said confused you, just pause the video and once again take a look at the calculation to arrive at the year 1 future value, specifically this point where we use 100 as a common factor. So we express 105 this way, and I'm using different colors to facilitate your understanding. Now how can I express this? I can express it as 100 times 1 plus 0.05, which we just saw equals 105, and then times 0.05. To make it perfectly clear, this equals 105, the same as this, and then times 0.05. Now from this entire expression, I will take out 100 times 1 plus 0.05 as a common factor. And as you can see, I've also reverted back to my yellow color. Now that I did this, what are we left with in the parentheses? Pause the video and think about it, and whenever you are ready, hit on pause and we'll go through it as a group. Assuming you did that, we are left with 1 plus 0.05 in the parentheses. I hope you are still with me, and one of the perks of this style of teaching is that you can always go back and rewatch a part that maybe confuse you a bit. So I encourage you to do that whenever you are feeling confused. After that note, Let's continue from where we left off. We got 100 times 1 plus 0.05 times 1 plus 0.05, which is the same as 100 times 1 plus 0.05 squared. So this result is neat. In order to get to the future value at year 1, we multiplied our initial amount, that is our $100, which is also the present value as it is resting at time 0, by 1 plus 0.05. You can also say 1 plus 0.05 to the first power, it's the same. And we've just shown that in order to get the future value at year 2, we multiply our initial 100 by 1 plus 0.05 to the second power. We can do a similar analysis to conclude that in order to get the future value at year 3, we need to multiply our initial amount by 1 plus 0.05 to the third. And as an exercise, I would recommend that you try to arrive at this result on your own. Now if we were to generalize this relationship, we would say that the future value equals the present value times 1 plus r to the nth power, where n is the number of years related to the future value we want to arrive at. To show the association, you may also see this expressed as future value subscript n. Of course, strictly speaking, or mathematically speaking, we didn't really prove this. But what we did will suffice for now. This is a very important result, as we now have a mathematical relationship linking the future value to the present value, and vice versa. Let's enhance the analysis in the following video. 